and welcome to The Rules Guru. Today we're going to continue on with what we spoke about last week. We're going to look at body obstruction as well as third party obstruction. So if we return to the rule book cares, again, rule 9.12, players must not obstruct an opponent who is attempting to play the ball. Players obstruct if they back into an opponent, physically interfere with the body of an opponent, shield with any part of their body, or if we talk about the third party, a player who runs in front of or blocks an opponent to stop them legitimately playing or attempting to play the ball is obstructing. This is a third party or shadow obstruction. All right, it's demonstration time. So what we have here is we have Kez being the attacker, making her way into the circle. As the defender, I've come out and I've propped ready to make a tackle. In this instance, she has backed into me, which means it is my ball. In this situation, I have made the contact and I am backing into the defender. Therefore, it is a free hit to the defense and a 16. In this situation, I am the attacker who has been effectively defended. Therefore, with wanting to go towards the goal, I have backed into the defender, shielding them with my body. In this situation, it is a free hit to the defense at the 16 mark as well. So with this backing in obstruction, we've demonstrated this around the circle. However, if it happens in the general field of play, it's just a free hit to the opposing team. All right, so let's move on to body obstruction. So a body obstruction is when an opponent makes any influence on the person in possession of the ball's body. Let's demonstrate. So what we have here is I'm the defense coming out of the circle and the attacker has come in to make a tackle and bumped me off the ball. As this is a minor infringement, the decision is a free hit to the team who has control of the ball. If this was to happen inside the circle and the attackers had possession of the ball, it would be a penalty corner. So what we've just looked at is when the person without the ball causes the infringement. What we're gonna look at now is when the person with the ball creates the issue. In this situation, Tara has control of the ball. Due to her pushing me off the ball, she has caused the obstruction. She has used her body to prevent me from making a legitimate tackle on the ball. In this situation, Tara has used her body to prevent me from playing the ball. Therefore, it would be a free hit to the person who does not have control of the ball. No matter what the angle, this is the same scenario as Tara using her body to prevent me from making a legitimate tackle. So it's important to remember, the obstruction can also happen with a goalkeeper. If the ball becomes lodged in the goalkeeper's pads, this is an obstruction and therefore a penalty corner is awarded. However, a goalkeeper can also create a deliberate infringement by holding the ball down, preventing players from playing at the ball. This is a penalty stroke. In the situation where the ball becomes lodged in a goalkeeper, it is the attacker's responsibility to attempt to bring the ball out and play it at the net. If you can remove the ball cleanly from underneath the goalkeeper, it is play on. However, as an attacker, you cannot come through and hit the goalkeeper. That's right, so if you have illegitimately tried to play the ball whilst under the keeper, it's a free hit to the defence, therefore it would be a 16. So we've looked at backing in and body obstruction. We're now going to look at third party obstruction. So the rule states, a player who runs in front of or blocks an opponent to stop them legitimately playing or attempting to play the ball is obstructing. This is third party or shadow obstruction. This also applies if an attacker runs across or blocks defenders, including the goalkeeper, or play with goalkeeping privileges when a penalty corner is being taken. So in summary, you cannot use your body to prevent legitimate playing of the ball from an opponent. It's important to remember that this can happen by the person in possession of the ball and also by the opponents. That's all for this week. See you next time.